als hij nog ietsjes harder zou kunnen, zou dat nice zijn. Yeah, I was behind a piano. I don't know how old exactly, but I think I could have been older than four. I remember being at the piano and I uh, was at like a family dinner and I was just playing and she told me that I was totally like in this trance that I couldn't stop and I was just like touching uh, the, yeah, the keys and like really like, am I doing this? So that was the first small memory that it's somewhere in there. <laughs> I started my first band around that time. I was like 10 or something. I was really into the Chili Peppers, like everyone my age, which is funny because it was like their, I don't know, fifth album or something with Californication and stuff. Uh, first instrument was bass, uh, also because this band was already, we had a drummer, a guitar player, and I first joined this guitar player to a, a guitar lesson, and then the guitar uh, teacher just gave me the bass. Uh, so I went home and I asked my mom, can I play the bass? And she said, oh, that's funny because she used to play the bass as well. And I didn't know that until that moment. And uh, yeah, I actually played, uh, uh, yeah, I started playing bass and she taught me the first lessons and I still have her bass actually. Yeah. My mom is Dutch and her parents are from Friesland, uh, but they moved uh, to Amsterdam so that's where my mom grew up um, and my father's from Ghana from Kumasi and uh, yeah in that time like late 70s early 80s a lot of Ghanaian people went to different countries also the Netherlands but also my uncle lives in Oostenrijk, Austria and one lives in Canada um, and yeah my father came to Amsterdam and they met at the Vondelpark I believe and uh, yeah love was in the air I guess yeah <laughs> I also did a cover for my upcoming album from this uh, Ghanaian high life legend, Ibu Taylor, uh, which was really fun to do. And uh, yeah, I feel like I'm, I still have a lot of uh, digging to do in the Ghanaian history of music. So uh, yeah, there's a lot to find. <laughs> I think, yeah, I was 18 when I started studying and at that point you don't really know what you want to do. So it was also like discovering along the way what I wanted to do musically. But uh, yeah, I learned a lot of, but, uh, from my yeah, colleagues and students and teachers, obviously. Um, it was just a collection of all these different people making different music, which was the greatest inspiration. Uh, yeah, it's a studio in a basement in Amsterdam and um, I ran it uh, together with him, my guitar player, uh, a keys player today. <laughs> uh, uh, we ran it from, <laughs> yeah, multifunctional Tim. We ran it from this drummer, Victor, uh, so we've got uh, all, all kind of stuff there, but my piano that used to be my mom's from my old place is also there now, which is really nice. So I think that's my favorite piece. Yeah. Influence in my work. Uh, yeah, I think Nina Simone is always a big inspiration because she, I don't think you can necessarily hear it in my work at all, but she doesn't really fit into a genre or something and she, always wanted to be this classical piano player, but she uh, ended up yeah, being this singer. Um, I think she yeah, takes uh, a lot of inspiration also from different kind of music. And I, I feel you can hear that it's not, it's not a trick. It's really her and she has this incredible voice uh, that she uses in her own way. And she has this incredible yeah, playing style, which I hope I can uh, someday also have like, a, a, like your own sound technically also and uh, I think yeah she's this incredible strong woman with this incredible sound so well it's not really about one encounter and not about one woman actually I think I can in my in my mind there are like three events that led up to this song but it's I think it's like when you write a song it's always when you're writing it for me it's like while I'm writing it I'm kind of understanding this feeling of what you just described, meeting somebody that's the better version of yourself. The first time I met 
like person one, you don't necessarily find the words for what you're feeling and then you meet somebody else again, you have the same experience, another woman and the third one. Um, and then you start writing and you connect all these stories together um, to this yeah, similar feeling of uh, you wanting to be a better version of yourself and these other people are kind of uh, like, yeah, inspiration for that. Well, the line definitely comes from a story. Uh, I was in uh, LA and uh, one night me and some other people went to a uh, tattoo place and I was like, I'm gonna take a tattoo, but I didn't. For me, it was like this moment of like, I chickened out actually, basically, and I want to be this person that just goes drunk to a tattoo shop and, and puts one down, <laughs> but I didn't. And she was like, I'm just doing it. And I felt like, ah. That was like, oh, yeah, that was one of those moments that I feel like I'm not that free or I'm pretty strict with myself. I think for me, like writing a year and releasing it the year after, you could say it's long and other bands take like 10 years to make an album. So if you keep it to yourself, it doesn't exist. Yeah, well, it doesn't exist in its final form because you keep on changing it. So it doesn't really exist as it will be if you release it. In that sense, I feel like you have to, yeah, sometimes just get out of your own little space and release something. Otherwise, yeah, it doesn't exist really for, for, the, for the real world. <laughs> it's kind of an ongoing process, like, Sometimes I'm in my studio um, and I've got a lot of stuff over there and sometimes behind the piano and I have this start of an idea and I record it on my phone and then I'm in the car and I listen to it again uh, and then I think of, oh, wait, I, sh I should, should add this kind of part and then I record it again and then I'll take it home and, and, and actually, yeah, take it back to the studio again. Uh, but yeah, this, I don't really have a method yet. Yeah, I recorded like this demo version where I assembled some drums I recorded and uh, loads of guitars. Um, it was even more punky and rocky at the, at the beginning and then uh, yeah, I worked on it with my producer and we made it a little bit more, um, a bigger contrast, like the, the verses were more the, the, the intimate introvert me and the choruses are more the stronger parts. Of it. And then uh, one night I was already recording the vocals and I just sat down behind the piano and I came up with a line and I just recorded it in the vocal, well, it's technical, in the vocal take. And the next day I, my producer said like, oh, that's nice. And we kept it in and I was like, yeah, that's that, that little part was what it was missing. And it was like glue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is, yeah, this is what we came up with first. I worked with uh, Shop Around and they, um, I just went to them with a bunch of pictures that inspired me while writing this album. So I got like this picture with all of the, like uh, the Olympic game in, I think 1932 with a lot of people like in the stadium and also had this picture of people climbing on each other. You have this thing in Spain where they build like mountains or like t towers of people like it's a game and people want to go as high like all of these things i had in mind with the line big dreaming ends um and then yeah we talked a lot about it and then they came up with this concept which i love and um yeah for the singles we were like what, were, what are we going to do um and then yeah we wanted to highlight kind of the stories as as a song each and took scenes from this whole building yeah i don't think you have to overthink it you're just looking and you're hearing the music and like this is the one and uh, yeah
Don't know 